Hello guys, Sujara speaking. Welcome to Return of Book Reviews, episode number 26. And today we're originally going to do Priceless Memories using the book edition. And, but instead, I couldn't find the book everywhere. But I decided to read um, the Kindle version of the book. Excuse me. So I decided to read this now. So we got, shall we? So we got for us. Anyway, chapter four. Dorothy Joe, wife and partner, okay? About two years ago, I received an honorary decorate from my alma master, mayor, okay? Dory University in Springfield, Missouri. And I was asked to give the commitment address to some of Dorothy Joe's lives in France were in the audience, okay? Wow, okay. You explain the grad graduates. And there are families that I will not be up there receiving an honorary diary, have announced if Darby Joe got in, if it had not been Mrs. Bob Barker. Mm hmm. She had graduated so much, Charm Laddie, and had been the graduation of her class. She has also been an, immediately accepted into Georgetown. George Washington University, excuse me, medical school, which is one of her of the better medical schools in the Midwest. She flew all the way and married me. Wow. From the age of 15, Darby Joe was a part of everything in my life. She certainly deserves a lot in her, in her credit and, and every for every success I may have and have had, okay? It was seven years ago, I never, I remember it vitally about even close my eyes. We had our first day on November 17th, 1949, the same year Wizard of Oz came out. But anyway, Darby Joe was also 15 years old. And then we were um, together from a van until she passed away at uh, age 57, age of uh, uh, 57 in 1981. Uh, she was my wife, my partner. The greatest support, and she had more to do with my happiness in life than ever a ever person. Okay, she was not just an, encouraged me from the background. She was right there in the trenches with me in the early in the early years. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Ryan producing, working alongside me in the radio, advertising, broadcasting. She was my be. She was by my side throughout my career. She used to say I was a lucky man. She was right. The best luck of all was having her be my side, by my side um, for so many years. We met at Central High School in Springfield, Missouri. Jim Wall. Who I remind remain a old friend for all those years is one of those who introduced us. He and I uh, were pals, okay. In those in in those years, he lived just a few blocks from Darby Joe. They have grown up together when they were good friends. He was go going to take someone to see an El uh, first Grower Garage concert, happy now his last name, sorry. He suggested I ask Darby Joe to be my date. Wow. I have not met her, and it, but I have seen her. But she was an unexpectedly pretty popular. I didn't think she would be interested in going out with me, but Jim said she, that she she would. But, she, but I asked her to be my date for the Ella first Garage concert. And she was said yes. I'm surprised and fired and proud to see you with her. We were together that moment forward. Okay? And how about going to her, with her um, to the great Ella Fitzgerald concert? And it's a way to start a romance. Darby Joe, who used to say if Bob Barker had anything, and it's totally because I did, did all those shows, fashions, bake offs. And parades for so many years, but she was tenuous as well. Also bright, loyal, and loving. Wow, kind. But anyway, 
Um, I didn't realize that he he had figured out. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Oh, so excuse me. My brother can surprise me once. He was talking about talking with someone else. He said about that Darby Joe was the smartest woman he had ever, ever known. I didn't realize he was but figure out that out, out. Excuse me. He he knew that she was the smartest that I ever before in the ever the God concert that was over. I remember another concert was we attended was back in those days at the sh shrine um my squad in Springfield. The band was Tommy Dorsey and the, and the Swede crew. There was uh, a big dance floor. Bleachers were sitting. Okay, Darwin and Joe and I were sitting up at the bleachers. Okay, listen to bad when Dorsey announced I have a younger singer singing with the band for the first time tonight. I hope you all enjoy Mr. Frank Sinatra. Wow, now camp comes Sinatra. He sang a song called. Indian summer. Wow. Now I am tone deaf. I don't know what from good. I don't know good from bad. Wow. I don't know what's going on there. So I turned for Darby Joe and and I said, "How is he?" Okay. And she said he's pretty good. She was right. She wasn't he? She? Excuse me. Forget it. Well, that I did know that in 1980, I was I want to talk to him that this very evening when with Frank Sinatra himself. I was one of the CBS anchors from the famous Pastora tournament for the Wells Parade for 21 years. And I was at pre always pre taping the interview with the Grand Marshal of the Parade. The pre tape was shown at the Grand Marshal Road by during the live teletag, telecast, excuse me, of the parade of New Year's Day. Okay? Frank Sinatra was Grand Marshal of the Wells Parade in 1980. Wow. As usual, we did our pre tape interview, and afterward, we sat and chat for the few minutes. I told Frank that Dorothy, Joe, and I had the pleasure of being in the audience that evening in the Shrine Mesquite in um, Spring, Spring, for Springfield, Missouri. Excuse me. Frank, was, a, was that really the first time you sang in the Tommy Dorsey band? I asked. Frank said, Could have been, could have been. Frankly, I had a hunch that Tommy Dorsey did the same introduction for Frank in every city on that same on the series of one nighters of Clark, Missouri. For years, folks my age in Joplin, South St. Joseph, Kansas City, St. Louis, etc., etc., uh, into Oklahoma and points west, um, had probably um, been telling that their grandchildren and everyone. Else, um, who was in that set? They heard Frank Sinatra the very first time he sang that Tommy Dorsey band. When quiz, um, Frank chose to stay. Um, could have been, could have been. Very nice of Frank. Um, not to be still nice, us, I mean. Hmm. In high school, play of the Central High School basketball team. Wow, okay, Bob, Bob, girl, okay. And Darby Joe was a cheerleader. In my junior year, 1949-1940, basketball team went to Lebanon, Missouri to play a regular tournament. It was a highlight of my basketball playing days. Not only was I was a the high point man for our team during the tournament, but I was the second highest scorer among the, all t the teams in the tournament. It was a very exciting for me. We won the tournament and... I received a small gold basketball trophy as a trophy. Wow. When I came home, I gave my gold basketball to Darby Joe, and she wore it proudly about around her neck all through the rest of high school and college. We were married. She had the gold basketball put on the charm, bracelet along, among, along with her over cement expense in our lives together. She would wear the charm bracelet when we went on trips, on airplanes. It was a topic of conversation where we want. As the bracelet grew, made mental self for our lives, we joined to it. But we'll start with the basketball. Okay? 
the charm bracelet became huge finally. I have it upstairs in my, house, my home, and my gold basketball is still on it. And essentially, um, at the turn of the century, um, which he about to do it um, next year, like this sometime, or sometime later this year, 2023 of December, that Century High School team I played in my junior year was named the best Central High School team in the first half of the 20th century. Wow. My senior year, did, we did it fair at all as well. Mainly because Bob generally graduated. Bob was our um, center, um, the first rebounder. We, with Bob gone, we did have a top notch rebounder. And you can't score without a ball. In spite of the teams with decline during my senior year, Jordan University offered me the basketball scholarship. And I had to thank my high school co coach, um, Jim Ilwig, um, a former Dory star, to put in the, the good work for me. In the event, I immediately grabbed the scholarship because Dorothy Joe was going to the Dory. Um, so that's where I wanted to be. I stayed in touch with J coach Jim Ilwig. For as long as he left. When I was hosting True of Consequences, he had a stunt that required contestants to shoot free throws. I said, It's easy, let me show you how my high school coach, Jim Ewing, taught me how to shoot free throws. When I shot and I shoot, show, show, um, and I shot again, and I could not make a free throw. The audience probably enjoyed my flight. Wow. And I finally made it free for we move on with the show. But the next day, I got a telegram from Coach Ewing that reads, The next time you shoot the free falls on television, please don't mention my name. Wow. Wow. I never thought when we were still in high school, we were down at Lake Tony Como, which is now better known as the Sturburg of Branson. During my high school years, I worked summers at the bellhop in the, at the hotel. Um, and Dorothy Joe was visiting me. We were sitting on the um, veranda on the hotel at the table. There was a um, deck of the cards that was somewhere I've left. Dorothy Joe picked up a deck and she was uh, uh, stomping and threw them. She was she turned over the tens of spades. She threw it uh, over to me and said, keep that, it'll bring you luck, okay? I still carry that car with me. I carry uh, it in the entire, my, my entire life, excuse me. And it certainly had brought me luck. I never got on the airplane cockpit without it. I kept it in my billfold. Fold. I have it in my pocket for every show I have ever done in my life. Darby Joe's lucky ten of spades. Darby, Joe, and I were together in high school and college, but I left college after two years to become a na naval uh, aviation cadet in World War II. Okay? Um, as a cadet, you can uh, not be get married until you have earned your wings. Exactly. Darby, Joe, um, went ahead to finish college in Dury when I was a cadet. Okay? It seemed that everyone is in my cadet, but 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 the rule, he got married and as soon as I, he get his wings, got his wings. Excuse me. It was a part of graduation ceremony. Guys, get his your wings. Go home, get married, and report to your next base with your bride. I came home and lived at the Springfield. After I got my wings, went, which took longer than I expected, but I'll tell you the story later chapter, which I'll talk about in another episode. Book reviews. Um, Darby Joe and I had um, not planned a wedding, um, but we know we wanted to get married. We went down to Ozark, Missouri, to get a license because we were we wanted to surprise everyone in the our town. Her father, Oliver um, Ginian, have announced it was a Green County Assembly at the time. While I was in the courthouse. Where Darby, Joe, and I will have to go for our marriages license, okay? 
the bread of God in the spring field. So off we went to Ozark. There we learned that Oliver knew that we had to purchase a license in Ozark before we got back to Springfield. Friends of Oliver and Ozark tipped him off. He was happy and we was not surprised. Darby Joe's parents said that um, they were in a nice way for us in Springfield. One of our friends and all the trimmings were if we were, if we wanted, excuse me. Or they said they wanted to just give us that money. Excuse me. What do you want, they asked. Darby Joe and I said in the museum, we want the money. Got on the train, headed to St. Louis, got at the hotel reservation to say, we went, when we arrived, we went through the yellow pages and found a minister. Went to his home to get married. A friend of mine, pilot named Howard Hessek, um, um, lived out just outside St. Louis. Uh, he have, he have also gotten married. So he and his wife came and stood up with us at our way. It was January 12th, 1945. And Darby Jo wore a red dress, and I still have it. She looked great. Both of us were extremely happy. Wow. In the context of some magnitude, regarding, regarding that minister, occurred five years later. In 1950, Darby and Joe and I moved out of Hollywood. We have an uh, apartment of La Palmas, Las Palmas, something like that. I don't know. Spoil Hollywood, Bob and R. We were we wanted to go to the church one Sunday. We walk up in this mom in this church in the corner of Highland Franklin. There's a minister who have married us five years later. For earlier, excuse me. We have we were amazed. I'm not sure he remembered us. There's so many um uh young couples. We have we had. We have quick who had quick on Maya's uh, wins during World War Two. We'll move on to the next page, and um, we're gonna wrap things up for chapter four because this might be a huge chapter right here, seen here. But you know that's just me. But anyway, it's all right now, so stand by for us. But anyway, oh, man, come on. Okay. We were already this part, but anyway. So yay. Okay, there we go. Okay, we're on the next page. Anyway. After we're married, I was stationed at, in D-Lane, Florida, and Darby Joe loved it there. We both loved the community com and the sunshine. It was one, it's one of those many um, share enjoyments. It was in Florida. And Dorothy, Joe, and I began our ride rituals and that would last the entire duration, okay? Um, uh, oh, man. Of our 47 years of marriage, it was always difficult to find a place during, to live during World War II. Um, and we first went to d -Line, and we lived in a hotel. We ate in the sorry, um, a romantic hotel, dining room, or worse, in the restaurant. Do ask me how, and that I might have expected. Darby Joe's quickly found a charming place of for us to live. A free room, apartment, and house. And we moved immediately. And it was basically flying all day. When I returned, Darby Joe had cooked her first meal. For us to ask husband and wife. And was prepared for us to serve. She bought us about a candle and turned out the lights so before she called me for dinner. We ate our first home cooked meal together as man and wife. It was a dinner by candlelight. I remember the dinner violently and her face in the candlelight. Wow. 
It's wonderful, romantic. Um, um, as it turned out to be, there will be a practical reason she has arranged the candlelight. In addition to cooking dinner, she has also um, baked an apple pie. The, pick, the pie was delicious, but the oven was an old one. Wow. But for some reason, it had made parts of the pie very look, but look, look very black and burn. Wow. It was not a burnt pie. It looked a burn in a few places. Um, Darby Joe had used a candlelight, so I would not see a color of pie. Exactly. But, and, and that's how candlelight Ratch was born. Mm-hmm. So the day four, when he... We were we at the home dining together. We were dining by candlelight, and that would prevail for seven forty seven years. Excuse me. Even when we were we would just have a sandwich and bottle of beer. Um, and we had it by candlelight. When I got out in the navy, Darby Joe and I went back into Springfield, and so I can finish my last two years of college. So. She uh, apparently got a job teaching bio biology at Central High School, and almost as prominently, she had a reputation of being one of the most, if not the most, popular teachers in the school. Darby Jones was just 21 uh, years old, and when she be became a teacher, she was so young and she pretty, and she looked more than just like a student, but than a teacher. Um, sometimes I would, uh, go by the high school, pick her up, at the end of the day, and she walk, um, among, um, the students in all of the car. Uh, think how lucky I was to have her as my wife. Wow. As a guy enrolled at, at Dury, I said I'm all about getting a job myself, okay? At first I would try, I may try uh, to get a job as flight instructor. But as a local airport, at all naval vanishers um, qualified as flight instructors upon discharge. But as I, have no, I have no real desire to instruct. I have loved flying. Wow. But instructing did probably appeal to me. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it seems wasteful not to use the education experience I received in the Navy. Ben heard the manager of the radio station there in Springfield who was described as crazy about airplanes. And it occurred to me that it was such a man that just uh, be an interested in having a former Navy fire pilot in payroll. The station manager's name was G. Person Ward. And the station was KTTS. Although I have never been in the inside radio station, Although I thought it might be fun and interesting to work in one. I probably made an appointment with Mr. Ward and I left them with the chance. D d okay. Ch um, but okay. I will put in the naval office of your four, office of your four, pin my wings that go, go in all, all, over my heart, and then headed to KTTS. For some reason, I always remind my war, Mr. Ward that Mr. Ward was nicely dressed. Wearing a gray clean plaid suit, white shirt, and white what appeared to be a squid skilt tie, dark blue. Okay, he invited me to sit down in a combo's chair near his desk and said, "So you were a Navy fire pilot." Uh, during my telephone conversation with Mister Ward, when I made an appointment, uh, he had established that I had been discharged from the Navy, that I was born fires. Yes, sir, I replied. What do you fly? Told him the most of my charm was an M FM2. Um, it was an original F4F Wildcat with a larger tail and more powerful engine. However, I explained to Mr. Ward. I checked it out in the F4U uh, Corister, but been placed in the fire pilot pool. It was a war not ended. I would um, have joined in a sea going, sorry, doing have announced it, flying, um, corners, okay? Mr. Uh, Ward 
um, listen, um, so, in internally, to so everything I said about airplanes, that I got the distant feeling that he had been the youngster, okay? Uh, he have, well, he would love have, he have loved to have been the controls in this coaster himself during World War II. After been 30 minutes of talking about dogfighting, dive bombing, and carrier landings, I had my first job in radio. The steward take me on into the studio to have me read about one minute of Stuart's copy. Excuse me. But that seemed almost secondary. I went home and told Darby Joe that I was going to work in the radio station, KTDS. And she asked a perfectly simple question. What do you know about radio? I answered honestly, absolutely nothing. <sighs> Sorry about that, everyone. I started out writing local news with a news editor, Bill Bowers, former vaudeville holder who have been become a really dedicated newsman. Also, I have a five-minute sports cast. It was sponsored by Hires Root Beer. And I opened by saying, Hires to ya. It's a cheery, happy voice. And if I were to say hello to a friend, the sports cast didn't last long. But over the period of a year or so, I did news on the air. I gave a staff announcer. I have a disc jockey show. I did everything and... Everything that had a chance to be a station. Let's see, is that all we got? This chapter? Nope, hold on. Okay, not sound that's on the next page. Not yet. Hold on. Okay, we, it's not in it. Okay. We're still at page 82 right now. Hang on. Okay. <sighs> Never mind what I was going to say. But, you know, that's just me. Anyway, as I admit it, <sighs> I'm tone deaf. Uh, I was probably the only tone deaf disc jockey that I ever had in Missouri. Or probably not. But I faked it. Be right back, people. Back, folks. Sorry for the way I just came back from my, um, just, um, recovery and things like that. But I'm back. I'm just, um, just read the rest of the, uh, Chapter 4, and we'll get to wrap things up. Anyway, um, I've admired, I told Death, um, I probably the one only, um, tone deaf, uh, this doggy that ever had in Missouri, okay? The, oh, probably not, but I fake it, okay? I always had a, uh, copy of Downbeat magazine in my fingertips, and told my listeners who was on the drums, um, who was on the clarinet. Who did this riff? Who did who did did this riff? By the by the way, who was a riff? Wow! I did my first uh, remote uh, broadcast at D K T T S. I did all my classes at Dury in the morn, so that I could walk work in the afternoon shift as an announcer. One day, Mister Ward uh, called me and told me to stay at um. Dory after my last class because they were going to lay the concert cons sto stones like that for the new field house as he wanted me to the um to do a um live broadcast of the ceremony Mr. Ward said he was said Homer hum Humble one of the our engineers over with our all the equipment um and I should have met Homer at the so I have a future field house. I said yes, sir. I was delighted. Um, it was to it was to be the live remote broadcast, what my first one. Look out, and Merle, here I come. At, at my last class, I went down to the cornerstone ceremony 
to what was to be held, and there was Homer, already to be getting on. As promised, um, Homer had all the equipment that was in this car. He gave me a head microphone um, that was uh, had the call letters KTTS across the top of it and told me that we could go on the air live in about five minutes. However, the crowd gathering the ceremony is much longer, larger than anyone has expected. About three minutes ago, for airtime, I said, Homer, I can't see a thing. Quick, get on top of my car, Homer replied. I put this in the hand mic um, in my coat pocket. Um, and as fast as I could, I ch clambered up in Homer's car. Homer ordered me, you have one minute, Bob. I reached out into my coat pocket for a hand mic. And my whore, and my, into my whore, I could get into my, my pocket. The caller KTTS had become um, entangled in the line in my coat. Homer could caution me. 30 seconds, Bob. I pulled and hauled under my hand mic to no ball. Homer get a 10 second countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7. The hand mic was still taken off in my coat pocket. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, you are. And I did one only thing I could. I pulled my coat up in my face and spoke in my coat pocket. Good afternoon, KTTS listeners. We live at the Cornerstone Ceremony for the Fieldhouse at the Dory College campus. That's how I described the air, air, entire affair. Speaking in the pocket of my coat. Wow. When we get back in the station, Mr. Ward complained to Homer on the quality of the sound during the remote. Um, Homer did tell Mr. Ward that the sound wasn't flared. Wow. I've taken this job to KTTS to a group may have announced it to my air to my to the, the GI Bill. Okay. When I finished my degree at Derry. But I enjoy working this radio and so much that I might have I taught my I would like to stick with it after I finish school. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, I did everything and and a everything. Um that I got a chance to do it, KTTS. But I've been wanting to make in the living in radio, particularly on the network level. Um, I knew I should choose one thing, concentrate on B, becoming as good as I possibly could at it. As usually, I discuss a matter with Do Darfy Joe, but we didn't come in the de decision. Okay, we agreed that I should continue getting spirits and. The various um facts have announced it. A radio that we could would um, talk more about it. Eventually, I got the opportunity to host an audience um population show talking to people of, of the studio audience. The type of thing I did for fifty years on television. Dorothy Joe was in that first show, and when, when I got home, she said, "That's what you should do." You should do you, should, you did the be that better than you ever done everything else, okay? You did she didn't say I was good. She just said uh, I did a better than I ever done everything else. For that day forward, Darby Joe and I worked together on one goal in mind to be an to make me a national Warriors prediction show. Before I left KTTS with Darby Joe working right beside me, I have done shows for the studio we have a station. For the drugstore, grocery store, a fear, now in the street, and all those shows require ideas for them, for them movie, more ideas. They also needed writing researches, questions, and um, answers, and staging. Darby Joe was right at my side all the way during the share more. Of course, she was still teaching as well. She and I um, were work evenings and weekends, vacation as well. In early 1947, um, I have very good things about the summer radio course spot in the partnership playhouse in California. Dorothy Joe and I talk about it over, decided that I would graduate in June 1947, I should go out to California and take the course. And much about the lights, 
we learned that our friend Jim Wall was graduating from Missouri University at the same time was going to California to the course is sponsored by NBC. Of course, Jim and I decided to drop out together. And as a result, um, we share a piece of American history. We're among the first drinkers to imbibe uh, of what had become the legendary Las Vegas Strip. We drove to Las Vegas and all the lights and all the people. And uh, all the action was downtown Las Vegas. But Jim and I were curious about comments we have heard concerning from the new casino called the Flamingo. Some of the comments were hopeful, even Austin Mitzvick, happy now sip. Some of the comments were Stein, happy now sip. Jim and I decided to check out the Flamingo for ourselves. We drove up to clear out the Las Vegas, um, into the desert, then surrounded by nothing but more desert with, with Flamingo, a work in progress, and pr apparently progressing too slowly, in the opinion of some of the adventurers. Okay. We were told that the Flamingo was the idea of Benjamin Boxy Seagull. Mr. Seagull was was thought that that beautiful casino was top top talent the Terry Tate World Track. The expenders from Los Angeles. Well Jim and I visited the Flamingo in the summer of nineteen forty seven. Only the bar was open. Everyone else that cranes and carpenters, Jim and I have our drinks, Rob Rise. And I was recalling Split. That summer, with Jim, where Jim was host, ho honoring his radio skills in NBC, and I was doing the same at the Personal Playhouse, Mr. Siegel was shot um, to death uh, uh, in Beverly Hills. And I read his demise, and it's probably arranged by some of his disgruntled business associates. They jumped the gun, pun intended. And I was in Las Vegas recently. Now I was stood in front of Amigo. I saw nothing more but more hotels but malls. Um in every direction Mr. Siegel was right on. But he was chosen because businesses um associates uh, were not so poor, poor patient. Wow. I don't know how much his experience appearance in NBC that summer had to do it with it. But Jim Wall ended up as one of the most popular disc jockeys in New York City. In 1953, Jim Wall made a hit song called Gamma's Guitar. It's recorded by Rusty Draper, a popular vocalist at the time, and stayed on the charts for weeks. In 1957, Rusty Draper was still hot. And Hollywood folks would say, so a celebrity poker suggested to invite Rusty to do this guests appearance on truth or consequences. It was my idea it wasn't my idea. Excuse me, um, but I was all for it. Rusty agreed to do truth and suggested that a young friend of him has joined him. His friend was to try the attachment of joint from his work as a cowboy on a television western called Ramory and was rarely agreed. After Rusty and his friend had to do done their bit on truth I chatted with them for a few minutes, and I was never thinking, the young cowboy may be okay, may do okay, in Hollywood. His name was Chris Clint Eastwood. Now, in his 90s, according to Wikipedia, um, after my summer radio course, I worked at KTTS for another year. Um, um, and then, after a stop in Palm Beach, Florida, which I've been to once, or whatever time it was in the time, Darby Joe and I headed west. To be more specific, specific um, um, we headed to Hollywood. Um, after all, it was in Hollywood uh, in New York that the national radio shows originated. It was a national radio show that we were after. By a two-wheel trailer, well, all the worldly goods in it. And the way we went, now I have never driven a girl car pull in a trailer. We were all, all Palm City Beach limits. Before I realized there were, there is more pulling a trailer than you might think. Until you have experienced the trail of a pulling one. We were in violent windstorm most of the way of, across Oklahoma. By vent brochure of the fact that we, that we survived. But commandments mind tremendously. By the time we reached Hollywood, I could back the trailer up and even park it. Even the parking area was suspicious. Eventually, we got to Hollywood, 
sold the trailer for more than I have ever paid for it. It's one of the better investments. So that was chapter four, and that was basically it. I don't want to read chapter five today because number one, um, I have to wait till tomorrow to do chapter four for chapter five for right now, and two, this will have to wait till tomorrow. So. What I think about chapter 4 of Price's Memories, it was amazing. So far this book was, a, of chapter 4 was a sus. That was the bedtime story, bet, book, no, excuse me, book reviews, episode number 4, I mean, excuse me, uh, 26, The Return. Hope you enjoy it, stay tuned, the next one's gonna be chapter 5, My Year's Reservation, Price's Memories. Till next time, this is Joseph Papa, so baby. Good morning, Mr. Sue. Timothy out. See ya.